Hello everyone, myself Dr. Amit Maheshwari and today we are going to discuss some important facts regarding rickets. But, but we will discuss rickets in the form of case study. So please watch this video till the end because it is very very important not only for the biochemistry theoretical exam as well as for the viva exam but it is also important for the community medicine, medicine and pediatrics. So let's start. So the case study is one year old male baby belonging to low socioeconomic strata presented to pediatric OPD with bone deformity of weight bearing bones and widening of wrist. Test was prominent on examination and there was prominence osteochondral junction, lower limb was tender and child was irritable. Frontal blood bulging was also noticed and delayed closure of cranial sutures was observed. So this is the x-ray which shows widening of wrist and this is the picture which shows bow lag which is also known as the genuverum and this is the x-ray picture of the bow lag. Fine. And following are the results of various laboratory investigations. So the laboratory investigation which were done in this particular case were serum calcium level it was 7.5 to 7.5 milligram per deciliter which is reduced. Serum phosphate is 2.7 milligram per deciliter which is also reduced. Normal range is 3.5 to 4.5 milligram per deciliter. Alkaline phosphatase is elevated that is 675 international unit per liter. Parathyroid hormone level was also found to be elevated. Level of 25 hydroxycholecalciferol was within the normal range, while the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol was undetectable. So, these were the laboratory investigations. So now, let's see the questions. So the first question is what may be the possible diagnosis in the ABO case? So, from the description, we can say that the child is suffering from the rickets, from the various clinical findings as well as from the various investigation. And this rickets occurs due to the deficiency of vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency causes the rickets and if the rickets occur before the fusing of epiphyseal plates, then it results in the growth retardation and various kind of bone deformities. Like in the child, there is a weight bearing bones are affected, which results in the bow lag. Then there is an enlargement of chest is also there, which results in the pigeon like chest. Then there is a swelling of costochondral junction, which is called as a rickettic roshi. Then there is a transverse depression, which is passing extending outward from costochondral junction to the axilla which results in the Harrison sulcus. There is also frontal bosing is there. Then there is a calcium level is also reduced. Phosphate level is also reduced. ALP level is elevated which is also known as the bone marker. So from all this finding we can say that child is suffering from the rickets. The child is suffering with the deficiency of vitamin D which results in a disease which is known as the rickets. And if there is a deficiency of vitamin D before the fusion of epi epiphyseal plate which results in a growth retardation and widening of growth plate. And this deficiency of vitamin D occurs due to the various reasons like reduced intake, decreased synthesis of vitamin D, then increased urinary loss of vitamin D or maybe due to the resistance of alpha hydroxy cholecalciferol. And this condition is very very common in India, particularly in the poor socioeconomic status, which affect the young child from four to six years of age. Fine. So that is regarding the rickets. Now, this long-standing vitamin D deficiency results in a hypocalcium. As we have seen in the investigation, calcium level is low. Fine. It results in a hypocalcemia along with the features of secondary hyperparathyroidism. In the, in the investigation we have seen that parathyroid hormone level is elevated. So it will affect the bone mineralization. Fine, it will affect the bone mineralization which will result in a decreased bone 
mineral density and osteopenia in the x-ray now this rickets are of two types right the first ricket is the pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets which is also known as the vitamin d dependent rickets type 1 and another is the vitamin d resistance rickets now the pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets which is also known as the vitamin d dependent rickets it is a autosomal recessive type of disorder which occurs due to the mutation in alpha 1 hydroxylase enzyme while the vitamin d resistance resistance rickets it occurs due to the mutation in the vitamin d receptors itself and so let's see the details of these two types of rickets as i have mentioned the mutation in the alpha 1 hydroxylase enzyme results in the vitamin d deficiency rickets which is a autosomal recessive type of disorder and it will affect them mainly uh, it will affect the child mainly in the first year of age fine and it will result in the growth retard retardation rickets and it will also results in a hypocalcemic seizures and the laboratory investigation will show parathyroid hormone level will be elevated while the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol will be low or undetectable and the level of 25 hydroxycholecalciferol will be normal so that is regarding the pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets now another is the vitamin d resistant rickets so as i have already mentioned it occurs due to the mutation of vitamin d receptors and it is very very difficult to treat and this vitamin d resistance rickets the investigation the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol will be high and the level of parathyroid hormone will also be high while the case of this pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets can be very well treated by the supplying vitamin d and by giving the therapeutic dose of vitamin d you can treat this pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets but the case of this vitamin d resistant rickets is very very difficult to treat fine right? and you can differentiate these two cases that is pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets from the vitamin d resistance rickets by the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol in the vitamin in the pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets the level of this 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol will be low or undetectable while in the vitamin d resistant rickets the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol will be high so that is about the types of rickets so that is the answer of the first question now we will see the second question why the level of most potent vitamin d 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol was undetectable as we have discussed there are two type of rickets first one is the vitamin d dependent rickets and another is the vitamin d resistant rickets in the vitamin d dependent rickets the level of 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol will be low or undetectable so this is the case of vitamin d dependent rickets which is also known as with pseudo vitamin d deficiency rickets so that is the answer of second question now third question is which micronutrient deficiency is respons responsible for such manifestation in the rickets there is a hypocalcemia that is the reduction in the calcium level which occurs due to the reduced intestinal absorption of calcium so it occurs due to the calcium deficiency the main reason behind this manifestation of vitamin d deficiency is hypocalcemia due to impaired calcium absorption from the intestine which also results in impaired mineralization of bone so that is the answer of third question fourth question is what type of lower limb deformity is seen in rickets genu valgum which is known as the knock knee or genu verum which is known as the board leg so we have already seen in the earlier in the rickets both are seen and that is knock knee is also seen which is known as the genu valgum and there is also presence of board leg which is also known as the genu verum and if the mixed presentation is there then it is known as the white swept white swept deformity if the mixed presentation is there then it is known as the wind swept deformity so this is the picture showing the wind swept deformity fine this is the genu verum and this is the genu valgum what is the treatment plan for this baby so this can be treated very well by the therapeutic doses of vitamin d along with the physiotherapy so that is all about the discussion of rickets based on a case study these are the my references thank you for watching Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from me.
Thank you.